All right, let's do this one last time. You're a bit late. We can't all be everywhere at once. Little text might have been nice. I was gone for less than two hours. What happened? Okay, okay, okay. I know what it looks like, but here's the good news. Oh, here we go. The multiverse didn't collapse. Oh, cool. A little touch and go, but it worked out. Great story. Hey, did you finish the goober? It's not a goober, it's a gizmo. You always have to call me out. It's just really frustrating and bums me Don't out. get too excited, Miguel. It's just a prototype. Not excited. But you could be Ow. the first person to make an autonomous multiverse jump. Or the last. Okay, so we're just gonna roll the dice on this? So what do you say, pal? Where do you want to go first? Let's start at the beginning, one last time. Earth 67. Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. This is going to be my new Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse 2 video. The producers of the first movie also revealed a whole bunch of alternate endings and deleted scenes from the end of the first Spider-Verse movie, so we'll break it all down. We're doing an Amazon giveaway. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and leave your favorite moment from Spider-Verse on the video. What a great time to go back and rewatch the movie now because we're still all under quarantine. In talking about animation, one of the great things about animation is that most people who are working on animated movies and TV shows are still able to work right now, whereas a lot of live action stuff, like all the Marvel movies, have been delayed. What I'll do is I'll talk about the alternate ending and deleted scenes from the first Spider-Verse movie, then I'll talk about Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse 2. So Phil Lord and Chris Miller, the writers and producers of the first Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse movie, recently revealed how they completely changed the third act of the movie after they'd already released the first full teaser trailer for it. What had happened is, is that because they were within a year of the movie coming out, is that they had already animated most of these scenes at the end of the film. This is this big super collider battle, but they needed to change it to make the film work. They just felt like the version that they originally had wasn't as good as what we wound up with in the final version. But because so much of it had been finished already, they had to find a way to change the order of the sequences so that it told a different story and they could add different dialogue to the moments. There were also a couple scenes that they just deleted wholesale that they put on the Blu-ray that I'll include in this too. So if you look at these whiteboards, the red marker are all the changes that they made to the final version of the movie. So I'll explain what those are. But then after they revealed all this, the editor of the film came out separately and said, oh, in July, just six months before the movie came out, I also made a bunch of my own changes to the end of the film. So just to be clear, this is all from the giant super collider attack at the end of the movie where Team Spider-Man goes to stop Kingpin and then all return home. They refer to the team in the notes here as the spiders. So the spiders show up to stop Kingpin. But it all starts with Kingpin in this moment here, as their notes say, it's going great for KP, Kingpin abbreviation, exclamation point, his family's arriving, but wait, Peter B. Parker arrives and says, sorry, Kingpin, the party's over. This makes Vanessa go away, then Kingpin yells more as Dr. Octopus attacks Peter. Then you start to see all the red marker changes that they made to the plot. Miles arrives to save the day, must prove himself to Peter in order to save him, save Peter B. Parker. Note that they just said saves her from a weird thing then removes his mask showing himself to her because they hadn't seen him in his new costume yet. And if it wasn't clear, the black costume that Miles wears is actually the original blonde Ultimate Peter Parker's main costume, the classic Spider-Man costume that was red that he was looking at earlier. Aunt May gave him Peter's old main costume. I thought that you would need this. The story of the movie is all about him becoming Spider-Man, them passing the torch to him because that version of Peter died at the beginning of the film. So Aunt May giving him Peter's old costume is a way of saying, no, you're Spider-Man now. You're the Spider-Man of this Earth. Then in their whiteboard notes here, it says the team gains the upper hand. They beat Dr. Octopus. Everyone gets a moment to celebrate. You get all the fist bumps. Then it's Miles Triple Lindy Go. If you've seen a lot of classic Rodney Dangerfield, you might remember this reference. The Triple Lindy is actually a Rodney Dangerfield diving joke from the movie Back to School, which also starred a very young Robert Downey Jr., Iron Man himself. There's the Bye Gwen line. Miles tells Peter, go now. Peter says, you're not ready yet. I didn't want to leave you. There's things I can teach you. Miles proves he's ready. He says, go. Peter says, no, you're my one person. My one person I was trying to save. Miles says, no, I'm not, then says, call your wife, talking about Peter B. Parker's Mary Jane, who he'd been crying about through the entire film. Then in their notes, it says, Miles faces KP alone, Kingpin, shoulder touch, the hay move, he zaps him with his venom attack, which he can now do on command. 
So some of the major changes that they made to the end of this film is the way that they originally focused way more on the Miles-Gwen relationship. There were more romantic overtones in their original versions, but they made the ending here more about what's going on between Miles and Peter B. Parker because that relationship is much more important to the themes of the film and about him taking the mantle of Spider-Man because Peter B. Parker is sort of a representation or a callback to the original Peter Parker at the beginning of the film. One of the other big changes is they focus way more on the different spiders getting their big callback moments to earlier in the movie, like Spider-Man Noir with his Rubik's Cube, having just discovered color, I'm taking this with me, as if he's slowly finding happiness in finding color. Then there's all the changes that the editor of the film made just six months before the movie came out. Keep in mind too that a lot of these changes are happening after they'd released a couple really big trailers for the movie. One of his big changes was Spider-Man Noir fighting Tombstone with his hat instead of his guns. Spider-Man Noir is just one of the very, very few versions of Spider-Man who actually uses guns as his main weapons instead of just using his biological weapons like his web shooters or any other biological weapons that Spider-Man versions can generate. He changed the goodbye line for Spider-Pig, that'll do, pig, which is a Simpsons Spider-Pig callback from the Simpsons movie, which itself is also a reference to the Bay movie about the pig. If you look at a lot of the numbers on these whiteboards here, those are the numbers of the sequences and the order that they happen in. A lot of these change, especially when they were fighting in the order that they fight the villains in, just to provide more solid callbacks to earlier in the film. Like when Miles is fighting here, you see him mimicking all the moves that he saw the original Peter Parker using in his collider fight at the beginning of the film. They changed the Kingpin fight a lot to make it resonate more with Miles and his father Jefferson, who was watching this all go down in the final version. In the original version, Kingpin loses Vanessa at the beginning when Peter P. Parker shows up and says the party's over. In the final version, they show his wife and son from the alternate universe witnessing his fight with Spider-Man just like the original versions of his wife and son witnessed it turning away from him just like they did. It drives Kingpin over the edge and then Kingpin threatens Miles' family while Jefferson is watching this go down. Then there was another big deleted scene from their fight here that they put on the Blu-ray. As their notes say, Kingpin goes after his father, Miles saves him, and then when Jefferson looks up, he's gone, as the notes say, like Batman, quote unquote. In the final version, they just end it with that simple phone call between the two of them, a call back to earlier in the film. You know, Miles, you can talk to me about anything. It's a little more heartfelt, but let me know in the comments what you think about some of these changes in deleted scenes. Spider-Verse wound up being one of the best Spider-Man movies of all time, not just animated movies, but any kind of Spider-Man movie. Overall, it took them about four years to make Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, which gives you an idea for why it's taking so long for them to make the sequel, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse 2. But talking about what's going on with that, the teaser trailer, all the Easter eggs and reveals we already have for that movie. Right now, the movie's coming out April 2022, so around this time, two years into the future. They'll probably release the very first full trailer about a year before the movie comes out, so about a year from now. If you're a big Avatar The Last Airbender fan, the director of Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse 2 is Joaquin Dos Santos, who came up on that first Avatar series. He's also worked on a bunch of other animated series recently, too. There are over 20 different versions of Spider-Man that they tease with those logos in the teaser trailer they released earlier this year. There'll still only be four or five main characters, but most of the characters from the first film will return for the second one. But there's the red spray paint Miles logo. The shiny neon one is for Spider-Man 2099, which was obviously part of that post credit scene. He's the one that engineered the Parker Industries webware watches that now allow them to freely travel around the multiverse, which sort of explains the mechanics of the second film. The Super Collider was the reason for the crossover in the first film, but obviously they're not going to create another Super Collider for the second film. In the Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse comics, in the Spider-Geddon comics, they have webware watches which allow them to open small portals. The other moment with Miles and Gwen at the end where she opens the small portal to say hello to him also implies that that's a little while after that and Spider-Man 2099 has already given her one of those watches so that she can open portals to Miles' Earth. The Spider-Man I'm probably most excited for in the second one though is Supida-Man, the Japanese Spider-Man from the 1970s Toei TV show. He's the yellow and red logo here. And because they confirmed that he's going to be in the sequel, I'm also assuming they're going to include his mech with him too, because they sort of come hand in hand together. Ben Riley shows up here during the teaser, so I'm interested to see if they try to do some sort of clone saga through the Spider-Verse films. The animated Spider-Verse films also tried to cross over with the live action films a little bit. They wanted to include some live action sequences with Tom Holland's Spider-Man, tying it to MCU in the Venomverse movies. 
Venom himself doesn't appear during any of the logos here, but I'm also curious to see how they deal with the symbiotes in the Venom character because he's such a big Spider-Man comic book character, you would figure they would put Venom in the sequel somewhere. The other really cool teaser here is the Ghost Spider logo. I'm curious to see what they do with him in animation. He's been used in the Spider-Man PS4 game as one of the skins, but you don't see a lot of him in the cartoons or obviously he hasn't shown up in the live action series yet either. Then there's the Captain Universe Spider-Man. This is just a crazy OP version of Spider-Man. I'm just curious to see what they do with him. So just let me know in the comments, which new Spider-Man are you most excited about based on this teaser trailer? And because of all the quarantine that's been going on, let me know in the comments if you guys want me to do some kind of rewatch project with the Marvel movies. The Venom 2 trailer is supposed to be arriving sometime soon. If they do wind up posting that, of course I'll do a video. As long as you have alerts enabled for my channel, you should see that video when I post it. Everyone click here for my new Spider-Man Venom 2 video and click here for my breakdown of that other Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse 2 teaser trailer. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe. I'll see you guys tonight.